you can't be intimate with a person who's dominating you. You, you just can't do it. And so intimacy happens among equals, where, where we're respecting each other and loving each other. So the ethic of this is equality. How many of you grew up in a home where one of your parents was clearly dominant over the other parent? Raise your hand. Watch the hands. Watch the hands. Look around. Look around. Look around. Okay, put your hands down. How many of you believe that that had a negative impact upon their marriage and your family? Put your hands up. Look around. Look around. Look around. Look around. Oh my gosh. Okay, put your hands down. 70%, 70 to 80% I've done this all over the world for many years. Every time I ask that question, that's the response that you get. Uh, research proves, secular research proves that shared control is one of the most important issues in a marriage. We are the only animals on earth that weren't designed to dominate each other. Human beings, there's no reference in Genesis 2 when God made man and woman, there's never a reference to one person dominating the other until the fall. And after the fall, there was a curse pronounced, and Eve was told, you will desire to dominate your husband, but he will dominate you. It was a, it was a, a feature of the fall. We, we are supposed to interact and cooperate and make all of our decisions together, and no one should dominate the relationship. Jesus Christ is Lord of our relationship, and we don't dominate each other. And I was a dominant husband. This is what 1 Peter 3 says to husbands. Husbands likewise dwell with your wives with understanding. That means she's different than you, and you need not to treat her the way you would any other man. She's a woman. You understand her. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. Let me say, this is saying be, be gentle with your wife. Women are not weaker. Let me say right, that right there. Women can do anything. God made them a little physically weaker so they wouldn't take over the universe. <laughs> and he had to make sure you wouldn't do it. So you're a little physically weaker, okay? As to the weaker vessel. And being heirs together of the grace of life. Listen, husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Karen Evans is a fellow heir of the grace of life. In Jesus there's neither male nor female, and she has as much rank in the kingdom of God as I have, and she has as much stock in the Evans family as I have. You can't, you can't be intimate with a person who's dominating you. You, you just can't do it. And so intimacy happens among equals, where, where we're respecting each other and loving each other. So the ethic of this is equality. We will, we will not punish each other for being honest, and I will not act alone without you. And Karen, I can't tell you, I mean, it's, this is out of respect. Uh, this, Karen's not being bad when she says this, but this is out of respect. A million times in our marriage, Karen will say, Jimmy, I trust you, you just do it. And a million times I've said, no. Until you come, I'm not going. I will not make that decision without you. Because I want to make sure that every single thing in our lives are a product of us and not a product of me by myself. God didn't make marriage so that we can have two people living in the same home making independent decisions. Marriage is about sharing. But if you're going to share, there, and, and so let me say, health marries health and unhealth marries unhealth. You always marry your emotional match. Even if you marry the person God brings you, we always marry our emotional match. When Karen and I met, she hated herself, had no self-esteem. I thought I was God. We were a perfect match. <laughs> and really, this is the way we were. But I was too dominant and Karen was too submissive. But what happened when Karen began to get well and to be healed, she began to stand up. And, and for you to be equals in the relationship, the dominant person has to sit down. It's just a matter of being humble and being repentant and respecting your spouse. But the, the more submissive, and I'm not saying submissive in a good way, the more submissive person has to stand up. Let me say, when you change, your marriage changes. You ever been on a teeter-totter with somebody and you fear them jumping off? <laughs> okay, because you, there's an equilibrium there, okay? And if they move in, it changes. If they move out, it changes, okay? All that. When you get healthy as a person and you begin to stand up, in a loving way to your spouse, your marriage just changed because the equilibrium's changed. And when Karen began to stand up to me, it challenged me being an idiot and a chauvinist. And when she, she began to do that, it was like, wait, 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 you sit down, girl. Don't you start moving around over there. And because I, I had to make a response to that. Well, 
thank God for the Lord because he broke through my heart and I sat down. And our marriage went from this to this. In fact, Karen dominates me now. She's, uh, <laughs> is she laughing? I need to know. She's too healed. I've asked the Lord to take away some of her healing. And <laughs> 